today is the first Sunday of, of Advent. Uh, it's hard to believe that it's already here. It seems like we just did this uh, last year. It, 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 the old analogy as we get older, time moves faster and faster. It seems that it's, that it's true. It's hard for me to believe that we're up here talking about Advent again already. But Advent, of course, it, it, it basically means coming. We're waiting. This is a, a, a period of time of anticipation and preparation and Christ to come again. Of course, it has it's a twofold period of time. Advent is also looking back at that period of time, preparing for the birth of Christ. So, as we uh, prepare for that, uh, we remember Christ and all that he did and the birth of Christ. But perhaps even more importantly, and certainly more important, I think, to the early church, as we look ahead and we prepare uh, ourselves for the second coming of Christ, that Christ will come again, as he said. Now, as, as you all know, and I've talked about before, I'm not one of those people that likes to sit there and try to divine out of scripture when the end times will come and all of those things, because my fervent belief is that the, 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 the more we spend time trying to do that, the less focused we are on what we're supposed to be doing, which is to be taken care of creation of God here and now, and not be trying to second-guess God. One of the things that we have to bear in mind is that when Christ was born, a little over 2,000 years ago, as I talked with the kids, who was there at his birth? As we're looking in the Gospel of Matthew, who was there at his birth? Jesus was there, yes, his mother and father were there. But were any of the religious authorities there? No, no not a single one. Do you think that they weren't trying to figure out when the Messiah was coming? Yeah. They were. There was, there was just like we have so many people today trying to figure out when, when the second coming is going to happen. The same thing happened then. You had people that were sitting there trying to divine out of Scripture and trying to figure out all of these things. And how many of them got it right? Not a single one. The three wise men show up. They're called. But who are the three wise men? We talked about this in Sunday school, so my Sunday school people know the answer. Who are the three wise men? Who do we believe they they to be? Well, we talk about three kings, what have you. But most likely, and it's believed by most scholars, that these three fellows are actually Zoroastrian priests. And Zoroaster, and Zoroastrianism, is a religion that would have been practiced in Babylon. I've talked about it before. It influenced Christian or Judaism during the time of the exile. And there's many of the things that Judaism that we know today adapted or adopted from Zoroastrianism. Uh, but here we have these three representatives of an entirely different religion are the only ones that have figured out what's going on. We're not Jewish, Jewish followers at all. So, this is just another example of God loves to take a twist on us, doesn't he? It's always the unexpected. It's always the reversal of faith. Here, none of the Jewish priests or the rabbis understood when and where Christ was going to come again when the coming of the Messiah. And in fact, so many of them missed it entirely, even after his death, didn't they? So for us to sit here and to try to discern these things and to try to pick it out is an effort of futility, in my belief. What we need to do is to live, as I've said before, to live like he's coming tomorrow. And that's really what Advent's about. We're preparing ourselves spiritually, emotionally, because someday he will come. I don't know when. I don't know whether I'll still be breathing air. I don't know if any of the children here will still be breathing air when that happens. It really is a matter of necessity for me to know that. It isn't at all. The important part is that I live my life and that we teach those children to live their lives like Christ has come tomorrow. So, today is the first Sunday of Advent. And this is the Sunday of hope. Expectation. We have an expectation of what's going to happen. Hope. It's not just like, gosh, I hope I get a, a, a 
an iPhone or an iPad or whatever for Christmas. It's that, not that kind of hope. We don't hope. It's much like when we talk about faith. Faith isn't just wanting something to happen, is it? We have faith in God because we know that our God loves us and we know that our God, in the end, somehow will come through. The hope that we have is not a wishful thinking. It's a hope with expectation behind it that in fact, years ago as our Messiah, we know that he will come again. And he will. We expect it. It's not just a idle hope. It's a hope that filled with expectation. The irony is we stand, I stand up here today with before you and I talk to you about hope. When we look at the world today, where hope seems to be an extraordinarily short supply, doesn't it? We look out and we see ISIS in the news talking about the war in Syria and all of these things. And there's been even some things talking about World War III perhaps starting up from all of this nonsense that's going on in Syria and all of these convoluted uh, people being allied and the, 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 the cooperation between various groups that we don't really understand because it's all very covert. Uh, we look out and we see these cops being killed. I mean, it seems like every day you look in the news and there's been another shooting, another police officer has been attacked. Unfortunately, some days it's more than one. We just married uh, Justin Martin, and of course that day there were two, but there's been other days when there's been two or three people who have been shot, not necessarily killed. But we look at it and we think, where is the hope? What's the hope from that? We look at all of the people out there right now after we've just had our elections, and we have people protesting all over the place because of the elections, because they feel hopeless, don't they? They don't feel hope in this man that's been elected to be president. But the one thing that you have to realize that if you place your hope in human beings, you are hopeless, aren't you? Because the one thing about humans, as much as I've known so many good people and I've known so many good people that have loved me, the problem with human beings is that invariably they will let you down. Because none of us are perfect. None of us can quite live up to that expectation of what people have for us. But God's a different thing, sort of thing entirely. Hope in God is an entirely different thing. Hope in God is, what, is not just an expectation, is it? As the, the, the dictionary gives us, it's an expectation that it will come to pass. I don't have an expectation that God will get me out of this mess. I know God will get me out of this mess. It may not be in the way that I expect. In fact, I'd rather think it won't be. Because that's how God works. That scripture has shown us that over and over and over again. Moses is brought to deliver the people out of Egypt. Moses is the least likely to cry out loud. He's a murderer. He kills a man and violence. And violence. King David, you want to talk about the least likely. Remember when when they saw or he comes to, to Jesse and he wants to see all of the sons and he calls them up one by one. The, who's the last one that's called forward to pass all of them over for anointment? It's David, who's out in the field tending sheep because he's the youngest son. He's given the worst job of all. How do you like that? He's now anointed to be king. This is how God works. God changes things. He uses the least likely. We talked about this in Sunday school. So, no matter if you think that you are the least likely, that God has great hope in you. God knows you. He knows what you can do. So when you were, were talking in Sunday school about being sent, is what the Sunday school study is. And we do have a few books left if anybody wants to join our Sunday school study is about being sent. Remember that not only do we have a hope in God, reassurance, a knowledge that He is always there for us. God is hoping with a little different definition to it about us, each of us, that He can call us and that He can send us out into His wide world. Because this is how God interacts with the world. He interacts through other people. He interacts through each of you, no matter how young or how old you are. You can be a blessing to someone today. And if we wake up each morning watching for where God wants us to bless someone, remember, you may be that hope that's 
someone has, who may be God's mis missionary of hope for that person. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you so very much for the coming of Christmas, this Advent season, as we prepare ourselves emotionally and mentally and spiritually for the, for the, for the birth of Christ coming up on the 25th. Lord, we, we, we thank you and we, we ask for your blessing, we ask for your guidance as we prepare ourselves also for your coming. May it be tomorrow, may it be a thousand years from today, may it be ten thousand years, Lord. We ask that we be prepared, that we be ready today, tomorrow. We lift all these prayers to you today in your loving and grace-filled name.